Pedro's coming on right now. I want him to come on to like a crazy fire testimony of someone who was like, I didn't have it, but I have it. I help who achieve what through what? Who has that? Who crafted it on the on that call? Uh, I, said, I did. When who? Who said I did? I did. I didn't unmute myself, but I raised my hand to answer you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Claudine, go ahead. Let's hear it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, do, do I unmute myself? Wait. Yeah, you're unmuted. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, so um, I just recrafted it. Um, I help educate. I help educate homeschooling families on financial independence through STEAM education and entrepreneurship, and. I forgot okay, hold on. Wait, hold on. D is that super clear by show of hands? Is that super clear to everyone? I missed it. I'm getting a lot of head nods. Yes. You know <laughs> who she's serving. You know what she's doing and how she's doing it. All right. Who else has one? Sarah and Steve. Do you no, guys want to share? Oh, what? No, it's not specific no. enough. It's not specific enough. No, not even. Why not? Enough. Because entrepreneurship, that can mean cutting lawns, recycling cans. It's it's teaching kids. So it's teaching them true entrepreneurship through STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Oh, oh I didn't hear the kids part. I was, you yeah, know, I, I felt I, like I, it was super specific. Come again, come again, Claudine. Way to take a stand Read it for again. Yourself. Way read to take it, a stand read it again. for yourself. Read it again, Claudine. Let me hear it again. Because, you know, I got to be honest. I was rocking out to some chili peppers when you were talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's so okay. So I didn't catch some, I just gotta be honest. I was getting a little bit of chili peppers in here. So come again, Claudine. Oh, shoot. Claudine. Okay. Yeah, I had to get rid of the um the light in the back. Sorry about that. I wasn't right. expecting it. It looks see. like a halo, so just leave it. It's, it's working for you. <laughs> I educate homeschooling families on uh, financial independence through STEAM education and entrepreneurship. Do you see that? Because we teach okay. them how to turn entrepreneurship. No, I, like help, STEAM education. I help, I help okay. homeschool families. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, right there, there's an opportunity to sub niche. Because mm -hmm. now you have a lot of homeschool families since Corona. Right. So you have an opportunity to get even more specific about what kind of homeschool families. Mm -hmm. Okay. True homeschool families, because all of these hybrids aren't real homeschool. They still go to the regular schools. Okay, so maybe you would say true or 100% or exclusively homeschool families. You see a nuance right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now watch. Let me give you another potential one. Okay, right? You can do, you, um, now you can nuance, you can do, you can add a geography filter. Where are you from, Claudine? New York, but we're moving. Okay, where are you moving to? Texas. Well, it's, that's a big place. What part of Texas? Houston. Houston, great. You, what if you did this for Houston Metro, and then you could do like a once a week and once a week meetup or a monthly meetup? See, all of a sudden now, you could you, she could sub niche her who by geography. How else could she sub niche her who? Well, the thing is, is we do it through a software, so it's not really uh, there. No, yeah, I'm just giving you guys. I'm giving. I'm more, I see what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you guys see that there's ways to even take each of these I help who, what, how, and go deeper and more specific in each one of these three areas. <clears throat> okay. So for example, um, Claudine, don't you like, let's, don't you think there's a lot of uh, Latino families who yes. had to go into homeschool? Don't you think that'd be a niche? If that, I'm not saying that would be your niche. But what if there, what, don't you think there's probably Latino Spanish speaking families who are all kinds of struggling with homeschool right now? Mm -hmm. So boom, that could be a niche, not, not just homeschool families, mm -hmm. but like ESL kind of families, right? Or like, or Spanish speaking families, that could be a sub niche. You could take a sub niche and go into, you know, urban, you know, urban communities. That could be a sub niche of the homeschool family in, er, you know, more urban areas. You see how you guys can get even more nuance here okay so just wanting to show you guys what was the second thing you helped them achieve what you said financial independence financial independence yes okay guys no what's wrong what's wrong with financial independence nothing's wrong with that we all want that. that's why we're all here 
But here's 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 what's not here's what's wrong with it. It's too broad. It's too big. Everybody wants it. It's too vague. It's like saying freedom. Well, we all want freedom, but I mean, it's too it's it's kind of like too big and too universal, and it's too like it's too an obvious thing that we all want. So now, um, Claudine, I need you to make that more specific. Like instead of talking about financial independence. Um, how can you make that even sharper, more crisper, right? Would it because there's maybe for your who um getting out of debt, just paying eliminating debt? I help homeschool families eliminate debt, right? Or uh mine is to get them uh, get bank. them away from work, from right. traditional work. Because well, you, they, don't, okay. they don't realize that automation is about to take away a lot of jobs. So it's me helping them prepare for the automation of most of the okay. jobs. Okay, guys, do you see how from financial independence, we had no freaking idea that that's what Claudine was talking about. Right. Okay. So now it's I help homeschool families. I'm going to recommend you even sub niche there. Mm -hmm. Achieve, right? Um, uh, launch a side hustle or achieve freedom from their nine to five or transition successfully transition out of their nine to five into a profitable home business with with because that with could be thing it could be amway right it could be it could be selling candles it could be it could be starting a landscaping service but nope yours is with give me your thing it's it's niche um, the niche is steam we teach them how to, to to utilize science technology engineering arts and math to craft unique um uh, uh entrepreneurial uh, opportunities for their family so okay by yeah. launching with by launching a steam based business boom that's your vehicle that's your how to okay okay now here's some concerns i already have that i'm gonna share with you doesn't mean it's a problem mm -hmm. this means you have to think about this mm -hmm. most people most people have no idea what steam is but guess who knows what steam is people who know what steam is <laughs> right. so do you see how claudine may already have a very tight micro niche because the minute she the minute that she went into steam all of a sudden that like there's only very that's that may be a very small highly motive highly um my god what am i trying to say Sub, it's a sub niche it's a very, it's a, very yeah different. it's a group of people who are very passionate about steam know what it is so the minute she added steam skies this is a powerful pro and holly is jld here what's happening what is a bro i've been here for 14 minutes just looking at your face bro look there's worse things my man <laughs> many I, worse things i didn't know and then and then hey just make sure hal is coming at, at 10 30 right or, yes at, okay correct cool. all right so let me wrap this up here and then i'll bring on my man Oh, you came with the shirt today, dude. Okay, listen, we have a lot of requests. Yes! No. Claudine, we're gonna go. We're gonna oh, go. No. I bought the audio, and I bought the audio book last night as well. So yeah, uh, oh. you're an angel. You're an if a hundred people buy the audio, John will not only take off his shirt. No, you're just kidding. Just, just kidding. Just kidding. So if a hundred people buy the audio, I won't take off my shirt. That'll be the gift. <laughs> guy yeah anyhow but i think there's a good chance we'll we'll see john shirtless because we're going to be in the resort in florida that's true we are going to be in florida if a couple you days. are a fan of chest hair i gotta tell you this guy has a very nice i'm not a big fan of chest hair let's get back to steam let's get back to buddy <laughs> this woman's amazing i want to amazing Claudine, let me just let me just wrap up here the teachable moment is that one word steam mm -hmm just bam that one word really kind of sealed in this micro niche okay that's the one word i didn't hear because i was rocking out the chili peppers okay <laughs> one word guys please catch this please 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 for john lee dumas you know guess what john lee dumas's one word was fire no daily 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 right? daily john loomis became the only when he added the word daily you see when you see you, how you put me and dumas together loomis i said loomis sorry yes. I said. 
schedule. Guys, I've been talking for an hour straight. My, uh, okay, listen. Let me let me jump in here for a second, Pedro, because I, I just want to just share with Claudine that one thing that a lot of people struggle with when they do what, what Pedro does is saying to do, which he's completely right in, is just continuing to niche your face off. People are scared that they, they resist that. But what you don't realize is all you're looking to do right now, Claudine, is just get a wedge, a small wedge of momentum, of traction, of proof of concept into your world. And girl, you're going to blow that shizzle up in the years to come. And you're going to be the media empire that I've turned into from my tiny little niche that just that word daily that nobody thought I should do. Nobody wanted to hear about. It was too small. It was too whatever. And I've blown it up. And this is your wedge. So don't be afraid when you're listening to Pedro, and this is for everybody that's here, and you're, you feel like you're niching too far, too narrow. We're not writing your gravestone right now of like where you're going to be for the rest of your life. We're saying this is where you start to get traction, motivation, momentum. Momentum is the hardest thing to acquire as an entrepreneur. Yeah, you can't yeah. get it going broad. You can get it going micro niche. You get your little your fingernails just into that cliff and then you just pull yourself up over the ledge and then you take off running. So you with us, Claudine? Yes, I am with you. 100%. I believe it. I believe it. So good. Holly, can you please contact our swag store? I want a niche your face off t-shirt. Um, <laughs> since that happened on my backstage, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take credit for that. It's going to say Pedro Adeo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Pedro face off. Pedro Adeo as quoted by John Loomis. Inspired by John Loomis. Yeah, I'll change his name. It. That way people don't know. I love that. No, I'm just <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Was that helpful? Now everyone's like, Pedro, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. Listen, guys, I can't do this for 815 of you right now. We but want listen, to. You, we do. Want of to. course you want me to. Listen, but guys, listen. You want and, to. And all, and I, and I want to. I'd love to do that. I just don't, it just like time doesn't allow. But guys, all of you can do this. Literally, I just walked her through a series of questions. What you could do is watch this replay and pretend I was talking to you. The power of the hot seat is just like, don't worry about Claudine. Don't just watch me totally serve Claudine. Pretend that was me talking to you. Well, what would I have said if Pedro asked me that question? Oh, okay, I would have said this. Well, what would Pedro have said back? Oh, he would have said, no, no, that's not good enough. Okay, all right. <laughs> he would have said, oh, okay, how about this? So anyhow, all right, JLD. JLD, guys, just so you know, JLD was not with us yesterday. We gave him the day off because, JLD, what happened yesterday? This brother of a book, this mother, this sister, this father, this daughter, this book was released into the universe, the common path to uncommon success. Um, man, I can just say to everybody who supported this, of course, Pedro being a huge supporter of this with his thousand plus book purchase. You know, a huge thank you. Just uh, literally eight months, 480 hours of working on this book in this room on this keyboard here to see it alive now, to see people all over the world, you know, publishing their picture with it. Because I know that this is the roadmap to your financial freedom and fulfillment. And just like Pedro said in the book, I don't let you just say financial freedom. I let you say specifically the dollars and the cents that that means to you, because that's the world that we live in is being specific and we make things happen so brother thanks yeah. for the day off yesterday i was just i had a live launch party at this time we were going crazy we were doing some awesome things the book is live in the universe and um hey it actually debuted as a top 500 book in all of amazon all the millions yeah. of books on amazon which is insane and i actually went and checked pedro if you remove the books that are for kids five and under like the easter bunny poops book it would have been a top 50 book like i literally went through and just crossed off all the books that were like for kids five and under so Big success. Love it all. You're the best. Awesome. Guys, um, you know, the, you know what the coolest part about that story is? You guys got this book before anybody else. Before anybody else. Before. So that's cool. That's cool. All right. So guys, um, Holly, let's curate some questions. Let's do a little bit of more questions. Please have them be like um, mm -hmm. questions that are not just like, maybe that can add value for everyone. So Holly can curate a couple questions. Uh, JLD, today I went through... I went through really just kind of this really putting it together with the I help, you know, it was really about who, what, how, who, the micro niche, what's the big problem you solve, 
how is your problem, your process or product or service to solve it. And then we got into like becoming this attractive character figure to be able to begin being the leader of the movement. So JLD, how, talk about that as how have you intentionally curated, curated this culture at Fire Nation, right? How, like even that, even Fire Nation, like why'd you pick fire? How, why'd you pick these things? How have you built your culture and your values and how have you kind of evolved into the leader that, of, of this movement that you are today? So one thing that I knew with my podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, if I was going to do anything, I was going to bring enthusiasm. I was going to bring the heat. I was not going to bring skills day one. I didn't have them. Yo, I did not have skills as a podcast host, as a speaker, as a communicator, didn't have any of those things. So I said, how can I create a brand? How can I create a brand that every day someone can press the play button, they can know that no matter what, there's this person behind the microphone who is giving it his all, who is working hard to bring you value. And I wanted to convey that the people that I was going to be bringing on were top of their game, that they were literally on fire, or maybe a better word is figuratively on fire. These are people that were on top of their game. And I want to build the whole brand around that. That's why the first question is, are you prepared to ignite? Are you prepared to ignite? Because I want you to know, are you prepared to just get excited here? Because if you're not, if you're not going to bring the kind of energy that Pedro brings, kind of energy that I bring, then I don't know if I want you as a guest on my show. Like I want people to know that right at the beginning. And I wanted to bring all of that around. And then I want people in my audience to be called Fire Nation as well, because I wanted them to be energized and enthusiastic about life because you have a choice. You can be depressed, sad, and complaining about life, or you can be optimistic, happy, and positive about life. Like th You literally make that choice every single day when you wake up. My audience, Fire Nation, made the right choice when they pressed the play button of my podcast. And that's one reason, by the way, and this is something I want you guys to be using in all of your communications and all content that you're producing to your audience is look at your audience as a person that's in the room. So if you ever have listened to my podcast, it's not just myself and Pedro going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I mean, I just interviewed Pedro. His, his episode dropped on Saturday. It was straight fire. So many people loved it. But guess what? I didn't only just talk to Pedro. I would turn to my microphone, literally, I would turn to my microphone like this. And I would look away from Pedro and I would say, Fire Nation, I hope you're listening right now because I want you to, to really take these three things away that Pedro just shared. And so I bring my audience into the conversation because I want them to know that they are my audience, my community, they're involved. And I want them to know that they are part of this movement that Pedro's doing, that I'm doing, that online entrepreneurs are doing, that are helping you make your movement. So you guys are all in the right place, Pedro. Love the questions. Love to get into some direct questions here too. Here we go. So a couple things. One, John picked a core value, enthusiasm. It's core value. Core value, enthusiasm. And okay. That doesn't have to be yours. Well, Pedro, I'm not like a crackhead like you. You know, I'm not really a crackhead. I'm a, <laughs> You're not a crackhead. You know, like I just have crackhead like energies where I've been accused of. I'm like, in my ads, people go, this guy's on crack. <laughs> I'm like, well, uh, thank you for the compliment, but I, 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 I've never used drugs in my life. I just have a lot of energy. And I have a lot of passion for what I do, but you may, you, your podcast or your business, or your movement may have a more cerebral tone, might totally. have a more mellow tone. It might be guys, it's, this is about you and the people that you're, like, this energy is not, this energy would not work. If I, if my who was like Ivy league professors, this would not work. Pedro, let me it, cut in with one sentence. This world does not need a pale, weak imitation of Pedro or of JLD or of fill in the blank, any other person in this world. We are both I, already pale enough. We don't need any more pale. We can't I'm actually not pale. that pale. I'm in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm actually not that pale. But we've got we, the Zoom. I have the Zoom enhanced. So I look a little bit more like orangey. You look kind of tan. It's, it's the Zoom. It's the Zoom filter. But this world does not need a pale, weak imitation of other people. It needs the best version of you. And it does need the best version of you, the honest, genuine, transparent version of you. That's what this world needs. And we need more people that the best version of themselves. John picked core values. Let me recap. John picked core value enthusiasm. John acknowledged he was not the expert. Some of you are in this trap. You've built a prison for yourself because you're like, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not the expert. I don't know all the things. Yeah, guess what that means? That you're just like everybody else. 
None of us were born knowing squat. Let me remind all of us, all of us used to poop ourselves. All of us used to have people feed us. All of us were in horribly inept at existing without help. Okay. We, everything we have, we've learned. Okay. So what did John do? He went and found experts. He was the host. He threw the party. He literally was the host of the podcast. All the, so he went and found experts. You don't have to be the expert. He's not the and a core value. Then he gave an identity. Fire Nation. John's followers, his fans say would say, I am a member of Fire Nation. I'm part of Fire Nation. That's an identity statement. I'm an on-fire entrepreneur. I'm, in, I'm part of Fire Nation. Another thing. J when John talks to them in the podcast, you know what he's doing? He's honoring them. He's, he's, he, and that's a form of honor. Like, hey, I'm doing this for you. I know that you're here. Let me speak directly to you right now. Let me acknowledge your presence and your listening. But what a great principle to, to, for it to really make your audience feel that, remember that you know them, feel for them, and are caring for them by speaking directly to them. In the middle of this really awesome interview, John would take the time to literally look away and speak to them directly. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Okay, a couple of questions I'm seeing in the comment, and you're. Uh, I also text you um, oh. some of my curated questions. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, first of all, I saw a question: Can you carve an inch too small? And the answer is, conceivably, I get John. I love your thoughts. Conceivably, maybe I you. I don't, I don't even want to say conceivably because that just gives people the opening they feel like they need to like say that as an excuse. The answer is no. You cannot carve a niche too small. So stop thinking about it. Just release that from your bandwidth. Release that from your mind. It can't be done. And in the point zero 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 one percent chance that you actually did that and you tried running a business or challenge to it, guess what? You you'd be like, oh, I carved my niche too small. Like there actually nobody cares about underwater basket weaving. Who is Peruvian? Who is looking to get off blood pressure medicine? I, I, I'd be surprised. You would be surprised. I was just on that Reddit thread yesterday. <laughs> it was, uh, it was going off. It was anybody. Insane. Yeah. So this could be a niche for someone. Underwater <laughs> basket weaving for Peruvians with high blood pressure. This could What's be the next a question. Dollar bit. Okay. Good next question. question. Um, how do you avoid being married to your idea? Uh, um. Often, I think we have blind spots. And so, okay, how, how, how do people avoid they're overly locked in, overly married to this idea? And they're like, they're going, and it's just time to shift, innovate, and get off it. Like they're too, it's just time to like shift it. And they're still stuck on, they think they have this amazing thing, but the evidence is maybe saying otherwise. Okay. Yeah. This is the answer for you guys right now. You need to have 10 meaningful conversations with people who you think are your perfect customer for that idea, your perfect client, your perfect avatar. 10 conversations where you're asking them, what is your biggest struggle right now? And at the end of those 10 conversations, I promise you, the next step will reveal itself. The shift, the pivot, it may be small, that it may be just a little tweak, or it may be a massive shift. But it is so underestimated having real conversations with real human beings who are in your avatar, in your perfect client, customer, consumer of the content. That's the next step. 100%. John, when creating a movement-based when creating movement based content, what do you start with? I know what I would start with. What, what would you start with? Say, say the question you broke when up first. When creating movement-based content, where do you start? I'll let you go first. The problem. The pain and the problem. Always. Easy. Your answer, John. I was going to say pain. So you said problem. Then you said pain and problem. So you took mine. Well, the problem well, this, leads to pain. You've got to go to pain. And the reason why I say pain is because people will beat a path to the doorstep of the number one solution to their pain, to their obstacles, to their challenges. And they will part with their hard-earned dollars. They will vote with their wallets if you're solving a pain, if you're removing a pain. And if it's just a little itch, if it's just like, oh, yeah, that's kind of uncomfortable, it's often not enough to get people moving. You want to look for the sharp tack that people are sitting on that's just bugging the crap out of them, that's causing them real pain, real agony, real stress, 
real sadness, real fill in the blank every single day. Go there. Like again, it's nice when you have a hobby and other people join you in your hobby, but it's another thing to be the number one solution to a real pain point. Can you can you can you micro niche with a direct sales product? Direct sales aren't marketing. Okay, where are my where are my network marketers? Direct sales wave wave at me. Oh, I saw a couple waves. Look at me, look at me, look at me. <laughs> One hundred million percent. Now, with all respect to your upline, your leadership, the company training, I, guys, I was in Eric Marketing back when they would they told me talk to everybody, just go go for no, talk to everybody. Just yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'll I guess text me by the way, he's on. I guess if I ask a hundred million girls out, maybe three or four would say yes. Guys, that's a horrible for like I'm not doing that. I don't have time. I don't I don't want to kiss I don't want to kiss eight thousand frogs to find one prince. <laughs> if I was in network marketing, this is the only thing I would do. This is the only thing I would do. I would take the company, the product, the story, which is obviously you believe in the main thesis, and I would go find a group of people and I would go all in on that group of people. And when I was there in marketing, I actually kind of saw this happen more socioeconomically. Some of the biggest back in the company I was in, you know, a long time ago, one of the fastest growing companies was with the Asian subculture. Yeah. These guys just had their own meetings. It was all in, I think it was Korean or I don't even know if it was, but sus. And they just were killing it. And they were just, they were, in, it was, it was like a Korean subculture in the company and they were blown, they were like the biggest, fastest growing part of the company. So and other people, they were blowing up in the urban, in the urban, urban areas, hip hop culture, urban areas. They, that was what they, that were going after that sub niche of people they were serving. Guys, I'm telling you right now, like it's, it's niche or die. I, I don't want to be overly dramatic. It's, it's, it's niche or you're out. And this, this would work in MLM. And I'm, I'm actually going to be, exploring and with some case studies this year in network marketing because once we do it a couple times and you guys see then you're going to be like okay pedro i believe you all right now um we got hal, else. We got hal. let's bring hal question. on spotlight yeah do you yeah. um i i'm looking do you know what name he has on his uh oh wait a second he says how might be under an alias while you guys are doing that if you're launching a movement intentionally what's the best way to launch Guys, seriously, that's why you've been here all week. I've been, I, that is what we've been doing all week. That is like micro niche, movement, like who, what, how. Guys, like that's what we're doing right here. That's how you do it intentionally. Okay. So it's everything we've been talking about who, what, how, take a stand, cause, and then launch challenges. Like I saw, I saw a question, JLD, while you're pulling up, how has JLD ever run a challenge, John? <laughs> I ran a challenge last year um, for Tony Robbins KBB course, which was a baller challenge. It was a challenge all about becoming an expert in your industry. And it was a five-day challenge that went spectacularly well, which resulted in us being the fifth, um, the number five promotional partner for Tony Robbins, which is equaling a trip for myself and Pedro tomorrow <laughs> to Florida to hang out with Tony Robbins for four days in Palm Beach, which is going to be awesome. Okay. I just admitted Hal Elroy. I just saw I him. Just saw him. Yep. So, I'll spotlight him right now. So, right now. JLD, so, can I, that happens. I don't, I hate to be, I hate, I don't want to be a one upper, but JLD's challenge was super cool. But there was another challenge that was used in that same affiliate promotion that must have been a little bit cooler. I'm gonna say it was. I'm actually gonna say it was five times cooler. Like not just like one x or two x. It was five times cooler. And listen, I am aware enough of my life and my surroundings to know when people are just better at me than something. Like, can Pedro out podcast me? Not in a million years. No, no, no. Pedro no. out challenge me every day of the week. That's why I go to him for all things challenges. He is the man. He killed me. We came in second place. If now JLD, yeah. if me and you did that challenge together. No, actually Pete Vargas was me. If me, Pete and JLD 
Hey, hey, listen, that's what we should do for the next one. Me, you, and Pete. Then we'll go, then, we'll, then we can maybe take Jenna. Well, listen, All speaking right. of VIPs, we got yes. a VIP in the spotlight right Let's now. Go. We got go. Mr. Miracle Morning himself. This is the person that, by the way, I spotlighted in chapter one, step one, which is identify your big idea because of all 3,000 people that I've interviewed over the past decade, literally one person came to this mind right here, this little pea-sized brain, when I thought to myself, who is the best person that exemplifies identifying their big idea? His name is Hal Elrod. He's written The Miracle Morning. It sold millions and millions of copies. It's been translated 37 plus times. It's probably more now because every time I talk to him, it's been translated into another language. And he's got, look at all of the, the pictures behind him, all the different spinoffs that he's had. By the way, from one tiny micro niche, just like I was sharing earlier, with, um, I think it was Claudine, if I'm saying your name wrong, I'm sorry, but he just wedged in there and then just blew stuff up over time. Hal Elrod, say hello, my friend, to all of these lovely people who are going through the Movement Maker Challenge. I'm seeing all of you. This is, this is beautiful, John. You attract a quality, high caliber group of folks. And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's wonderful. To if see you want it. your head to not pop off, you can click on view in the upper right hand corner and just type, just, just click speaker. And it'll just be me, you and Pedro on spotlight. That might, that might help because there's a lot of awesome faces. They're distracting me because these people are so good looking. I mean, they're so good looking. Well, that's how I do my channel. That's, that's my secret sauce is I only tell Facebook to show my ads to attractive people. That, that so, works. See how, what is that, man? Good to see you brother. I know we met. I know you meet so many people. We we met um, at a table during lunch at a, at Pete one of Pete Vargas's uh, Reach Live events. I think it was two thousand nineteen. Yeah, yeah. So we we connected there. That sounds about right. When um, when JLD we were talking about some awesome guests for this VIP backstage pass about movements. We were like, we got to have Hal Elrod, guys. How, how, right? how many of you guys have seen like every day I see an ad or for someone selling me a morning routine, something guys, this is the guy, this is the guy. I don't, I, there he was started no, the movement. He started the, he's, this is the guy that like, and maybe, maybe Hal is going to be humble and be like, well, I learned it from this guy or some, but guess what? We don't know that guy. Hal's the guy that made this famous. Famous. So yeah. I'm a, I'm just a I'm just a product of many other brilliant people, um, and and I always too I, I always you know uh, I don't know if it's right God creative consciousness ethos collective consciousness infinite intelligence but where do ideas come from I was thinking about that the other day I go I don't I, I can't none of us can take credit I feel like we can take credit for acting on the idea right but like where did the idea come from I don't know right it came it came from the shower it came when I was falling asleep you know who knows <laughs> yeah. so Hal when did you decide when so let's talk about the idea obviously you you say it came to you which that's how i get my stuff too by the way yeah but you did make a decision on what to do with it a lot of us get amazing ideas in the shower on the walk meditation you know doing your personal prayer and stuff but few i don't think most people don't do anything with them but right i mean so when I talk about when you say you know what i'm going to i'm going to run this thing i'm going to see what i'm going to i want to see I'm going to do something with this thing and see what this thing is. Talk about that experience if you could. Yeah, it was so 2007, 2008, right? Or I don't remember the exact date. It was in that, in that time frame. Um, I, was, uh, I was really at a low point in my life when the economy crashed. I crashed with it. And a buddy of mine recommended that I listen to this Jim Rohn audio to like get my mind right. And on uh, my very first audio of Jim's, he said, your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development because success is something you attract by the person that you become. I'll say that again. I see a lot of you writing it down. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development because success is something you attract by the person you become. And I quantified that immediately. You know, I literally stopped. I played it again. And the way that I quantified it is I went, okay, if we're measuring success on a scale of one to 10 in any area of our life, our health, our wealth, our family, our, our happiness, our, our energy level on a scale of one to 10, what level do we all want? Right. 10 being the best. We want 10. And, and then I asked myself, okay, what's my level of personal development? And, and the way that I defined personal development, it's kind of me as a person, 
Where are my beliefs? Where are my habits? Where is my confidence? Where is my drive and motivation? Where am I as a person, my level of personal development? And I was honest that I wanted level 10 success, but my level of personal development was like, get a two, like maybe a three on a good day, right? And I believe if you're looking at the screen, I believe that is the disconnect for the majority of society is everybody wants 10, few people are becoming a level 10 person in terms of your knowledge, your beliefs, your habits, your discipline, so on and so forth. So my epiphany was, I've got to figure out how to become a level 10 person so that I can create and sustain level 10 success. And I ran home and I just started Googling best personal development practices. What do millionaires do for their personal development? What do champions do? What do Olympians do? I, just, I was just trying to figure out what are the best practices. And I was looking for the best practice and I ended up with a list of six. Meditation, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and journaling. And if you think about how challenging that would be to think about any one of those habits, you go, man, I really should start exercising more, but oh, I don't know, I'm not, it's, it's out of my comfort zone. Gosh, I really should start meditating more, but when am I gonna find time? You know what, I've heard affirmations are great, but they're kinda, I don't know how to do them. Man, I should start visualizing like the world, you know, all these things, I should read more, I should journal more. But those are all overwhelming, sick, and then I'm, what if I did all of them in one hour? What if I woke up tomorrow an hour earlier and I did 10 minutes of meditation, affirmation, you know, 10 minutes of each. And I woke up the next morning, I did all six practices and I sucked at all of them. Like I had never meditated before. Affirmations felt really cheesy and goofy, just like pumping myself up. But within one hour, I felt incredible. Cause, and I was depressed at that time. My, I was in debt, my house was in foreclosure. The, the economic crash crashed me. And that morning I went, if I start every day like this, it's only a matter of time before I become the person that I need to be, that level 10 person to create that level 10 test. And it happened so fast. It was two months later. I doubled my income, started training for an ultra marathon. It felt like a miracle. And that's where the whole thing was born. And then, and I want to, I just want to wrap this up with, with a philosophy that I'm going to encourage all of you to consider. And this is why this idea, I mean, I implemented it myself. Yes. Day one. Right. And I believe that, that you take action immediately. In fact, to a fault, I take action. Like if somebody goes, man, I really, you know, I would love to talk to this person about this thing. And like, I'm already texting the person to make the introduction before, I, you know, they finish their sentence. They're like, whoa, whoa, no, like, wait, wait, not yet. You know? Um, so anyway, take immediate action. Yes. You know, make mistakes, fail forward. That's a one philosophy. The other philosophy that I have, though, is that we all have a responsibility to share with others what has helped us. And that's why as soon as I saw this helping me, I shared it with my coaching clients. Then I started writing a book about it, you know? Like, so those two things, the idea that you take immediate action, anything that might improve your life, just test it out. Don't wait till it's perfect. They always say, if you wait till all the lights are green, you'll never get started, right? So you just do the thing. You want to write a book? Well, you're not ready. No one's ready. You just start writing every morning for an hour until you're, you know, every morning. And then you write shitty stuff every day. And finally, one day you're like, whoa, this is really good. And then it starts to evolve. But anyway, so start where you are and then start teaching other people. And that's the best way, I think, for us to learn and evolve and to impact other people. Pedro, I think it'd be pretty cool for you to take how through what you took people through today, like the how, what. Um, who like kind of scenario and kind of see how, how, how has played that out in different areas. So people can really see how somebody, you know, at, you know, this level of success started at that, at that place. Yeah. That'd be That's a, that's a great idea, JLD. And um, first of all, how, like, I just, as you were talking, I was like, you and I need to do the miracle morning challenge. I was thinking that before I started talking, Pedro. <laughs> so you, buddy, you just let me know, like, when, you know, I know like both of us have probably, we plan our, we, I know both of us probably plan out our years and we got some stuff on the calendar, but man, let's, let's squeeze that one in, buddy. I think yeah. we'd have an amazing time. Jail, in I'm in. Next intro after this call. Or I'm, in, like I'm in for a third. People. I'm in for 0% of the work, but a third of the profits. That's what I'm in for. <laughs> that, that's JLD for you. That's JLD <laughs> for you. The guy doesn't pay taxes it's and doesn't want to work. work. 
Now he doesn't want to work. And once this guy isn't, but this is. Does it, will, will it make you feel good that the money that you guys send me, um, I get to actually keep? But listen, no. there's, 800, there's 832 people right now that just literally all raise their hands for the Miracle Morning Challenge. So we've got a lot of action takers in here. So let's keep the heat rolling, Pedro. And Howell and use your third to pay our tax bill. How about that? That actually okay, makes sense. Hell, yeah, let's that's go. Fair. Okay. That's a great That's point. fair. That's We're a great not point. all living in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Okay, Hal, let's go back to that epiphany. Okay. First of all, so today I did a, taught a whole framework on who, what, how. Super simple. What, how? Who, what, how? Who? Not how. How. Yeah. yeah. I always have to clarify that when I'm speaking. Yeah. How. H O W, not H A L, right? Yeah. So who and who is all about who's your micro niche? The micro niche that, that, that you're going to go serve. What is what outcome are you giving them? What problem are you solving? How is what's your process, your program, your service, right? So obviously, um, you've obviously tapped into that. So but way back when, and you had this big epiphany, like, okay, this, I this, this is, I feel amazing. It's like a miracle, yeah. guys. First of all, I want guys like, I want you guys to understand, these are miracles. A miracle, just a, this is a miracle. A guy who's depressed, house of foreclosure, debt going the wrong way in life to have a turnaround to have this kind of that's a miracle that is a miracle plus please this is where child likeness is very important we are encouraged to be like children children are always live in wonder and as adults we lose our sense oh yeah you lost 40 pounds who cares or oh wow you feel better now guys those are big things that we need to recognize those are miracles so i first of all how i a huge part of I think why this worked for you is you discerned correctly. This is a miracle. Like this is not just a feel good, rah rah rah, you know, siskumba kind of like it's not some fake hypey thing. This is real, and it is a miracle. So I want to acknowledge you for that. So when you had this big epiphany, you who was your first who? Who did you take this to, and why did you pick them? So initially it was my coaching clients, right? I thought, and it actually happened organically. That's what's so interesting. Like, I feel like when you, I don't know, when you're in flow, when you're living not for yourself, but for others and the greater good, and, and you're, you're open, and you have that time every day in silence to hear the wisdom of God or higher intelligence. Who is all about, who's your micro niche? The micro niche that, that, that you're going to go serve. What is, what outcome are you giving them? What problem are you solving? How is, what's your process, your program, your service, right? So obviously, um, you've obviously tapped into that. So but way back when, and you have this big epiphany, like, okay, this, I this, this is, I feel amazing. It's like a miracle yeah. guys. First of all, I want guys like, I want you guys to understand these are miracles, a miracle. Just, uh, this is a miracle. A guy who's depressed house of foreclosure debt going the wrong way in life to have a turnaround to have this kind of, that's a miracle. That is a miracle. Plus please. This is where child likeness is very important. We are encouraged to be like children. Children are always live in wonder. And as adults, we lose our sense. Oh, yeah, you lost 40 pounds. Who cares? Or, oh, wow, you feel better now. Guys, those are big things that we need to recognize. Those are miracles. So, I, first of all, Hal, I, a huge part of, I think, why this worked for you is you discerned correctly. This is a miracle. Like, this is not just a feel-good Ra ra ra, you know, siskumba, kind of like it's not some fake hypey thing. This is real and it is a miracle. So I want to acknowledge you for that. So when you had this big epiphany, you who was your first who? Who did you take this to and why did you pick them? So I initially it was my coaching clients, right? I thought, and it actually happened organically. That's what's so interesting. Like I feel like when you, I don't, when you're in flow, when you're living not for yourself, but for, others and the greater good and and you're you're open and you have that time every day in silence to hear the wisdom of god or higher intelligence or right um the, the things happen organically and so for me I, I created this miracle morning and a week later right so i'm on fire i've been doing it for a week it was a couple of weeks but i've been doing it every day i'm like i'm loving it and my coaching client katie goes um hell do you have a morning ritual? Like I, I really, I, I'm not a morning person, but I feel like I should have a morning ritual and I'm just chomping at the bit. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so, let me tell you, you're the first person I get to, I'm telling you. Right. So I tell her about it and she's like, I'm not a morning person, but man, that seems really good. And so, uh, so then I tell her and then I go, okay, I got to tell all my coaching clients. 
And so I told all my coaching clients, taught it to all of them, 13 out of 14 came back to their next call going, pal, I'm a morning person. I'm on fire, right? So that was my, that was my test group, if you will. And I think it's important that proof of concept, right? If you have this grand idea that you think is the idea, don't just write a book on it, right? Don't invest a year of your life or 90 days or whatever it is writing a book, share it with others, have them try it and then give you feedback iterative necessary, but you got to prove that concept, right? So what happened is once it changed, once every single one of my coaching clients, except one came back and said, how this, this miracle morning, like it changed my life. This is crazy. I'm a morning person. I'm having the best results in my sales career. I'm exercising every day. I'm, med- I'm doing all of it. It's amazing. I went, if the miracle morning worked for me and it worked for them and none of us were morning people, this could work for anybody. And so, so that's where it started. And I will say, I did go against the grain in terms of niching down. I decided that everyone was my niche. I went, everybody wakes up in the morning. And so, every, and this will benefit anyone and everyone. You know, my coaching clients were different ages, different professions, you know what I mean? And so I did kind of, you know, defy the marketing, you know, strategy of like niche down. And I just went, I'm going to write a book that can help anybody. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to share it with, anyone and everyone I can for as long as it takes until I change 1 million lives one morning at a time. And that, that's kind of how it was born. Yeah. So good. Let me jump in here guys real quick. Um, so first thing, this is always, this is, this is like always the path guys. This is like what happened with me. Um, I got asked to be on a podcast. Some guy with the podcast asked me to come on, talk about my faith and business. I was not even think I was not trying to. So when they asked me about it, just like when Hal's client said, Hey, Al, do you have a morning routine? He was like, Oh, good thing you asked me that today and not three weeks ago. Cause three weeks ago, yeah. I had nothing to tell you, yeah. but look how like when the, when the teacher is ready, the student appears sometimes. Right. Mm-hmm. So I got asked to be on a podcast. I talked about my faith in business and all of this psh, gold bombs are coming out. I was surprised at the things I was saying. I'm like, I didn't even know I knew this stuff. So sometimes there's this like this stimulus that comes again, God, the universe, whatever you believe in magic rocks. I don't care. Right. <laughs> this, this, this stimulus comes into your life and it pulls a demand on what you know, and then boom. And then how, what was in his hand? What did hell have access to? He had these coaching students. He shared it with them. Now, let me tell you what Hal did though. Hal, this was how, how long ago, Hal, did you launch your book? Uh, the book or the, when I taught the coaching clients? I was, well, when did you start getting the message out beyond your coaching clients? I mean, 2008. So I started speaking on it, doing it, whatever I could do. There we go. 2008. Guys, that's, do the math. Is that 13 years ago? Yeah, give or take. 13 years ago, Hal was able to go and take this category because he already had a niche. It was the morning routine. Hal wasn't trying to talk about all things. He wasn't trying to be Tony Robbins. Mm. He's like, no, I'm the miracle morning guy. I'm going to help you win the morning. After that, you can do whatever you want. Go buy Tony's books and go, go, go to, go to, I don't care who you, but I'm the morning guy. See, he had a niche. He had a niche that was niched enough 13 years ago to own. Part of owning your niche is doing the landscape to see, hey, does anybody own the morning? Is, and Hal was like, no, no one owns the morning. I'm gonna go be the morning routine guy. Now, guess what? Today, you can't be the miracle morning guy because Hal Elrond did it. But you know what you can do? I got a book I was looking for. I have a book somewhere here from a guy named Joe Polish. And it's the miracle morning for people in recovery. So now what's Hal doing? Look at all those freaking books. Those are all micro niches on the, on that wall, right? Hal read some of them off, read some of them off. Yeah. The miracle morning for college students, for real estate agents, for salespeople, for writers, for network marketers, for entrepreneurs, for parents and families. Boom. But, and now what happened is. If anybody wants to even compete in this miracle, in this morning routine game, they're going to have to go in at the micro, micro niche. But 13 years ago, it was there waiting for Hal to be the guy. 
So that's how you did. That's part of some of the ninja strategy about knowing how micro do you have to go? Is there, just be honest with yourself. Is there somebody, is there an incumbent? Is there somebody already in the seat you want to be in? Right? And do you think you can knock them off? It's hard to knock people off. It's hard to win that war. So then if someone's clearly owned the, if someone already clearly owned the morning, Hal wouldn't have won. But clearly nobody did it. He had the right idea at the right time and boom. And now look, now he's niched it down with co-authors, different people. And so you see this guys, that's a powerful question. Okay, so so that was the who. And you just went to, you know, then the what was the what? What what was the what? What was the problem you were thinking? What, what's the core problem you think Miracle Morning solves, Hal? To me, it's that every person, that one thing we have in common is that we have this innate desire and drive inside of us to fulfill our potential. Like I said, when I asked earlier on a scale of one to 10, what level of success do we all want? And John Lee Dumas went, oh, 10, right? Um, so we all want to, to be at our best. Um, and then I think that most people, sadly, right, that's like the story of the human race is that you, you settle for so much less than you're capable of for various reasons, right? For in, you know, insecurity and, and lack of self-worth. Or fears or you know bad habits or limiting beliefs there's all these things in the book i talk about like these are the obstacles that stand in the way of you living your full potential and so for me that's what the miracle morning is it's that every day you start your day in a peak physical mental emotional and spiritual state you start your day as a better version of the person that you were when you went to bed the night before and if you start every day like that you go from that level wherever you're at on a scale of one to ten and you niche up a little bit two three four five six, right you get better every day and you what we all want we all want to fulfill our potential and create that extraordinary life that that we dream of and so I, that to me was the ultimate problem that the miracle morning was solving okay so there it is the problem it the the, the promised outcome is unlocking full potential okay and then how how because there's a lot of ways people are trying to unlock full potential some people go to church to do that some people go to a yoga to do that some people do you know do some people jump out of airplanes to do that how's how's process was what the miracle morning the same right? the six that's it yeah savers baby savers What's One thing I was saying is, on, well, let's get to Sarah's in a second. Oh, right, you go ahead. Go ahead, Al. Go. Silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing, which is a pretentious word, uh, as JP Sears says, for writing. JP Sears said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's so funny. Guys, if you don't follow JP Sears, that dude is hysterical. I remember I used to introduce my guests as like in episode numbers. I'm like, JP Sears, episode 1346. And he's like, I am so honored to be 1,346 <laughs> guests. And I'm like, that is such a JP Sears quote. But listen, back to mornings, because there's some people when Howard talking, they're just like, I I'm not a morning person, like, like the person that his first coaching client. Let me just share something with you. And this might be kind of the army officer in me that's just going to have to step in here for a second. But wake up at 5 a.m. for 30 days in a row. And then tell me if you're still not a morning person at the end of those 30 days, because I'll tell you, you will be craving your warm, cold, dark, warm and cold, by the way, the cold room, warm bed, dark room by 9 p.m. after the end of those, those 30 days, and you'll get the best night's sleep of your life, I promise you. Yeah. So yeah, I always say that, you know, when people say I'm not a morning person, uh, if you don't wake up early, you're not a morning person. Just like, you know, I, I, uh, I committed to run a, a, an ultra marathon. I wasn't a runner. You weren't? Went, oh, I'm not a runner because I don't run. Hmm, weird. Like, it's not like I can't be a runner. No one was a runner until they started running and then they became a runner, right? And so it's it really, there are these limiting beliefs that I'm not a blank. Well, if you're not doing the thing that makes you a blank, then you're not a blank, but you can be anything that you, you know, hmm. that you commit to putting one foot in front of the other. So how these are all people that are here, they're part of a movement maker challenge. They're all looking in their micro niches to create movements that, by the way, these micro niches, my friends, are going to explode into amazing awesomeness over the years to come. What would you want to say to people that are looking to make their movement right now from everything that you've experienced? I think that, you know, one of the things that we all, that we also share in common, most of us, uh, especially if you're on, you know, if you're part of this challenge is that 
We want what we want and we want it now. And we, we lack patience. We, we want, you know, we, we see other people, we see Pedro, we see JLD, you see Miracle Morning and you go, man, I want that level of success or impact or influence or income or whatever it is. And I want it right now. And the problem with that is we're always looking for shortcuts to get there because what's the fast way to get there fast. And I think one of the most important things that we can all do is to acknowledge that it does take time. It does take time. And in doing so, realize that you've got to wake up every day and be at peace with where you are while you maintain a health of, healthy sense of urgency to get where you want to go. You know, and, and there's one of my favorite philosophies is that it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. And I shared that I was talking, Mike Koenig, I think was interviewing me. And um, I think Mike, yeah, we went to that same entrepreneur dinner with John Asraf, Mike Koenig, JLD. Do you remember that? That was like when Miracle Morning first came out, right? It was brand new, yeah. man. I was so excited for you. Dude, yeah. Um, so anyway, the, um, the, uh, where was I going with that? Um, we want it now. 10 year overnight success. Yeah. 10, thank, thank you, Pedro. Um, somebody pays attention. So 10 years been overnight success. And Mike Koenig had the best question. He said, that begs the question for those listening what are you, what do you believe in enough that you're willing to make, commit 10 years of your life to it, to get to the point of success that you want to be at? And I think that what I've found, and you can all probably attest to this, that when you finally get to that point in your life that you've been working so hard for, for so long, you almost never wish it would have happened any sooner. You look back in hindsight, you go, oh, this was per the journey was perfect that led me to this moment. It was rough. It was rocky. It took twists and turns. I fell down a bunch of times, but 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 all that time that I spent feeling stressed and and and, and scarce and I'm not where I need to be and it's not happening fast enough. What a waste of energy! So take that hindsight and bring it to your present life every single day. And again, wake up at peace. Enjoy every moment. This life is a miracle. Every day I just wake up and for no reason I drive around and I go, this is the greatest moment of my life. If somebody went, why? I go, because this is the only moment of my life. And I made a decision a long time ago that every moment of my life is the best moment of my life. No matter what's going on around you, it's all about what's going on inside of you. So really enjoy the journey. I'm, I'm not, that's not just, right? That's not just hyperbole, like enjoy the, at every moment of your life. Be so grateful, be so present and be at peace with where you are while you wake up every day and do everything in your power to take that next step to move in the yeah. direction of what you want. Yeah. Guys, I need you guys to <laughs> chat how this yeah. chat is out of control. I mean, they are so in love with what you're saying. I love how Isabella said the juice is in the journey. And I mean, there's so much truth in that. So how we can steal that from Isabella. We'll give her credit twice, but then it's ours forever. So thanks, Isabella. Yeah. So guys, let me, so Hal, do, I think we have a, I know we have a some limited time with you left and I need to go pack in 20 minutes or I'm going to miss my flight to Florida. So in closing, let me just highlight a couple things. I love what Hal just said. How can you be content in the process while not, you can be content, and not complacent. How can you be content while still urgently with a sense of urgency, pursuing what you want. Guys, I'm not offering you a shortcut. I don't believe in shortcuts. What I'm offering you guys here with movement making and our, my challenge framework is a way to collapse time so things can happen for you faster, but we're not skipping any steps. Short, a shortcut is trying to skip steps. You don't want to skip steps. You don't want you never want to be on a stage that's bigger than you. Because if you if you get if you have success that's bigger than you can handle, it's going to crush you. So I'm not here to help you skip steps. I'm here to help you get to those steps faster so you can do what I've done, which is to take what should have taken me 20 years and done it in 2 to 3. And this challenge framework is going to be the way that you take this out. How Good for Hal. 13 years ago, saw an opportunity, wrote a book. 13 years ago, that's how you did it. You wrote a book, you did that thing. Now, you know what you do? You run a freaking challenge. You run a freaking challenge. Guys, I'm literally going to sign this year a seven-figure book deal as an unpublished author. 
That never happens. You know why? I've done 47 freaking challenges in a row. And publishers like, I don't know who this guy is, but we're going to pay this guy because he can move the needle all on the back of challenges. So guys, this, how, bro, what you just shared, dude. I mean, I literally, Holly, I want to, we have, man, we have to share this interview with everybody. This was so freaking good. Are you guys okay in VIP? Can we just share this with everybody? I don't, I know they didn't pay, but can, can, I, can you guys, can we just be generous? This is too good to keep just to us, in my opinion. I literally like just have nothing but goosebumps and I'm emotional right now. This, mm -hmm. I just love what happened on this backstage. And um, Holly, while I'm going to give Hal a chance to give some final thoughts, I want to give one of you VIPers right now a copy of Crush It With Challenges 2021. Boom. Okay. Okay, you're gonna you all have a chance to buy it tomorrow. And like you guys all will buy it tomorrow. But I'm gonna give one of you guys a chance. One of you guys are gonna get that right now. So Holly, while Hal's giving his final thoughts, start picking okay. our winner. So no. I am gonna let you guys participate to pick one of you. And I want to read in the chat, that's where I'm gonna pick it from. But I want you to make a comment that said this $95 was the best investment ever. Like, I want to see your, like why you are glad you spent that $95. And then I'm just going to randomly scroll. Okay. The $95. Funniest comment wins. What'd you say? I said funniest comment wins. Funniest comment wins. All right, guys. Hal, thank you so much for being here, bro. We will definitely do the Miracle Morning Challenge. I cannot wait for us to collab on that. I want to say something to Tina real quick, Pedro, because she commented, how you could stick around for another couple hours if you took a private jet like you should <laughs> <laughs> to Florida. Oh, dude, I looked in the private jet. <laughs> I, I just couldn't, I couldn't justify it, man. I can't I, justify it. I've never flown I private. It's just, I couldn't. I will, I will build schools in Guatemala all day long. But taking a private jet is something I haven't been able to pull the trigger on yet I either. I couldn't do it, bro. I couldn't do and it. Listen, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not okay. fancy enough yet, but how? Something I want to share before we give it to Hal. <laughs> okay, thing. go this, ahead. This is based off of what Pedro was saying about, you know, this, this journey, you've got to be willing to put in the time, the energy, the effort, commit to it. But you've got to be clear. And I shared this briefly two days ago, but I want to share it really briefly again today because it's so important you get this message, is that you have two paths going forward from today. Both paths are going to be hard. They are going to be hard. The path of building your dream business, I promise you that is going to be a hard, hard path. It's hard for Hal, for Pedro, for myself. It has been hard. But it's also hard being broke, living paycheck to paycheck, not being able to support your family in the way that you want to, not waking up in the morning doing what you want to do, but doing what you have to do, looking in the mirror and knowing you're not quite fulfilling your potential. Like that look you give yourself in the mirror that that's hard too. And I lived that version of hard for six years. So I know I'm speaking from experience, post-military PTSD, depression, like I lived that hard. And I've now lived the hard of building my dream business for a decade. How's on 13 years? Like we've chosen our hard. And today, my friends, you get to choose your hard. And tomorrow starts with you choosing the hard of joining Pedro's course and let the journey begin. So Hal, try and top that brother. I don't, I don't even want, I want to say anything. I just, yeah, just, I don't want to say anything. That was, that was, I love that point, John. And I'm really, I don't know if I've heard that before, right. that, there, that there are two paths and they're both hard, yeah. you know? It's just that one, one, one's hard and it sucks, right? And one's hard and it's awesome. Easy choice, right? Like easy choice, you know? Um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I just, I want to, if I'm going to close on anything, it's just saying kind of echoing what I said earlier, which is what I've realized is that the mo to me, the most important thing in life is inner freedom. Like that's it. And, and I define inner freedom as it's our ability to choose how we experience every moment of our lives. So what that means is life can be really difficult and you can be really upset about that and really scared about that and really sad about that and be in a really negative turmoil, emotional turmoil state, or life can be hard and you can be really excited about the opportunity, really inspired that you're going to grow and improve and become better than you've ever been before to, to transcend all of your challenges. Right. And so to me, that's what I'm inviting everybody all the time is just find that place inside of you. That's just grateful to be alive. That's just happy because you have life decide this is the best moment ever because this is the only moment ever. 
And so that's it. I just leave you with tons of love. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. JLD, text me and Pedro. Let's make the challenge happen. And uh, I love all you guys and guys. Love you too, brother. Love you too. And Pedro, I've got, I've got a winner if you want to let me pick it, but I, I know I may not be able to pick it, but this person, yeah. I, their comment was gold. I thought. Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do. I think Holly picked a winner and you I picked a winner. So I'm yeah. just going to give away two people. Oh, look at that. I just doubled. I just doubled people's winnings today. I love it. I just doubled. I'm just going to give away two. And here's a, here's a back. Here's a bonus. An, uh, guys, here's all, here's how the flow works. Here's going to be a special bonus just for VIP backstagers. When you guys join Crush It With Challenges 2021, you guys are all going to get to be backstage VIP with me and Hal Elrod. What if I actually let you guys watch me and Hal Elrod, not just backstage, what if I let you guys watch me design that challenge with Hal? Ow, yikes. Guys, that's going to be a seven-finger challenge. <laughs> that's a seven-figure challenge. That's why John wants a piece because John. Like, when did I get cut out of this? Like, <laughs> what? no, you're definitely cut out. <laughs> I know. Bro, I bought a thousand books, dude. Come on, like, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> you're gonna be. I'm gonna get Hal's permission to okay. have you guys literally watch us do it live. You'll be on the Zoom call. I'll design it with him live. You can't talk during that portion, and then I'll let you guys ask me questions immediately after. Well, why did you say that? Why did you guys pick this? Guys, I've never done that before. I literally am just full of goosebumps. Okay. That was goosebumps. And my I mean, friend- I, I got to go. I got to pack. Holly, you can you know, you give this away. But, Love you guys so much. Be back here tomorrow. Listen, but Pedro's agreeing to this. If I get 250 Johns, just JLDs of the 750 people that are here, then that means that you want me part of that challenge as well. We just need- <laughs> We just need 250 guys. JLD. So just typing JLD in. If I get to 250, oh, JLD, here's what I'm going to do for you. For you, because you were instrumental in pulling this together, I am going to include in the VIP backstage pass offer of the move of the Miracle Morning Challenge a copy of JLD's book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success. I think that's very <laughs> respectable. JLD. Can we help? I, don't know. I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close to 250 JLDs here. I'm working at. <laughs> You'll be a guest speaker. You're going to be a guest speaker, and we're going to buy another couple offer. thousand books, man. Listen, go to Florida. I accept your offer. I love everybody in here. There's already 400 JLDs. This is amazing. Oh, you're making anyway, that number up. You're not making that. You're making that number. <laughs> are you kidding? I'm looking at it right now. The chat. It's on fire. Okay, cut know? this out of because the, they want to see John's chest hair. It's spectacular. <laughs> okay, you get out of here, Pedro. I get to talk. I get to talk. I get to talk to these individuals. Who okay, here's here? the winner. Julie wrote $95 for Pedro equals $95 million for me. That mindset, by the way, is so spot on. When you invest in yourself, when you invest your time, your energy, your money in the way that Julie's done, that all of you have done that are here right now, Julie, that was a fantastic comment. I pulled it out out of all the amazing comments that were there. Um, and I just wanted to say that, like, that's the exact mindset. It just said Julie. Um, I, I, I was intentional in looking for her last name because I see that a lot of people have it, but she just had first name Julie. <clears throat> so, Julie, you know who you are. Is that you, Julie? Was that, was that your comment? Yes, that was my comment. Um, well, you're welcome. I picked it out. Thank you. Uh, that mindset is spot on, Julie. I, I think that that's setting a great example and a great tone for everybody here because you did invest in yourself. You know, listen, $95 isn't chump change. You did it. You're here and you have the mentality and now you get crushed with challenges for free. Awesome. Thanks so much, John. I've been There's watching. So I've, been, I've been listening and not watching. I've been listening to you for years. So oh, I love, love that. that. Thank you for yeah. being part of Fire Nation. That's very appreciated. All right, Holly, I got to bounce too. But listen, everybody was great. I'm out of here. I'll uh, see you not tomorrow where I'll be flying to Florida, but Friday. So see everybody on Friday. Bye. All right, Julie, logistically, like I need some info from you. So if you could um, get that into me, that would be awesome. And then my pick was Autumn Strange because I loved that her comment was the $95 helped her see her true value. Um, oh man, her camera is off. But Autumn, I just want to say congratulations. Oh, there you are. <laughs>
<laughs> Congratulations. I love that. I think that it's amazing that when you position yourself in a place to learn from people who speak life and add value into you, you can take that same principle that Julie said, is that $95 is going to help me make that 95 million. So I exactly. love that you guys um, just went all out on that. Thank you, ladies. And uh, everyone, tomorrow we will be back 9 a.m. in the group, 10 a.m. in here. Uh, it's going to be fire. You guys are not going to want to miss it. Um, it was really fun hanging out with you guys, and I loved reading all of your comments. So we'll see you guys later. Bye.